Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you are doing well. This is physics. And in this presentation, we want to look at a very exciting, very interesting topic called mechanics. Mechanics, ladies and gentlemen. Please pay attention so that you understand everything that will be discussed in this presentation. When we see a train passing by, we ask or we can ask a lot of questions concerning its motion. Some of the questions that we may ask could be, how long will this train take to travel from, for example, Ndola to Kapirimposhi? At what time? we will reach its final destination. How fast? There are so many questions that we can ask, right? Yes. This is similar to, or this is the same as when we are traveling by car. We can ask same questions. What time will I be in Lusaka? We want to understand those questions. Not only that, ladies and gentlemen, when we are traveling by car on the road, we have seen government authorities putting signs that will guide motorists or drivers on how and what time they should travel. Some of the signs, if you have observed or if you have seen, could be there will be a sign that will, they will communicate to the driver that there is a cave ahead. The driver will be able to know this sign means there is a cave. If there is a point at which people cross the road, there will be a sign. They will communicate to that motorist or they will communicate to that driver that, oh, there is a what? Zebra crossing. Those are not the only ones. We also have, or we have seen, signs of this nature. It's written 60 inside. What does that mean to the driver? This area you're supposed to travel at the maximum speed of 60 km per hour. But what will happen if the driver ignores all these signs? Some, these are some of the reasons why we are having a lot of accidents, ladies and gentlemen. In this presentation, in this topic called mechanics, we want to understand that kind of or such questions want to be understood in depth. The first subtopic that we are going to consider is linear motion. There are five in total. The first one is linear motion. The other four are forces, will be the, the next one. After forces, we are also going to look at moment of forces. From there, we will also be able to look at work energy and power. From work energy and power, we will be able to look at uh, simple machines. Then we are done with mechanics. Let's begin with the first one, linear motion. The word linear means straight line. And the word motion means process of moving or changing position. So when we see a car or train moving, we say the car is in motion. 
the car is in motion when we see it moving so those or that will be the term that will be using to replace moving will be using motion the car is in motion just know that we are talking about the car is moving now before we can go into details of linear motion or mechanics in general there is a much needed point that we need to understand this is about understanding the terms that are used in this topic called mechanics if you will not be able to understand those terms it will be very hard for you to understand calculations and other things that will be discussed so let's begin with the terms that are being used here let me take you back the first topic in grade 10 physics is called general physics and the first subtopic there is called international system of units under international system of units we talked about a certain word called physical quantities when we say physical quantities we are talking about features or measurable features of an object there could be no exam or no physics exam without talking about physical quantities ladies and gentlemen and when we we are talking about these physical quantities we are talking about mass we are talking about volume we are talking about force we are talking about weight we are talking about all those are physical quantities we call them physical quantities there are a lot, there are a lot throughout all the topics in physics of physical quantities. Now, these physical quantities are in two groups or have been paired, divided into two groups. We have the first group, which is called scalar quantities. The other one is called vector quantity. So when I say acceleration when i say speed you need to know where it falls you see that oh acceleration falls here uh, uh, velocity falls here this speed force uh, falls here you need to know there are only two a quantity can either be scalar or vector how do we tell how do you know that acceleration is vector quantity let's begin by defining what a vector and scalar quantity is scalar quantity definition a scalar quantity is one in which has only magnitude a scalar quantity is one which has only magnitude when we say magnitude we are talking about size so a scalar quantity are those quantities that have got only size a very good example is speed speed is a scalar quantity we just say 60 kilometer per hour that is it the size or magnitude ends there that is a very good example of a scalar quantity but what we mean by vector quantity a vector quantity is one in which or which has both magnitude and direction so please get that scalar has got only one thing which is magnitude and when we say magnitude we are talking about size or length that's magnitude but for a quantity to be vector it should have two things one it should have size which is magnitude it should also show direction then you conclude to say oh this is a vector quantity a very good example is velocity acceleration those are vector quantities 
okay? Then, how do we work with these quantities? How do we work with them? Well, for scalar, we can add or subtract a scalar quantity just as we do with ordinary numbers. For scalar quantity, just like the way we add or subtract ordinary numbers, that's the way we work with vector quantities, just like that. But for vector quantities, that's the way we work with the scalar quantities. But for vector quantities, it's not the way we add ordinary numbers. Because this shows both magnitude and the direction. I'll give you an example of this a vector. When we look at the, when we have three points, for example, let's say this is A, B, and C, and we want to add vector A, B. Remember this mathematical statement. Do we just add ordinary like this? No. There's a pattern. There's a way of adding vectors. So if I want to get vector A, B, A, B, in this direction, have you seen? From A to B. What am I going to do? I'll say A, C. So you say A, C plus C, B. C, B. So that's the way we'll be able to add that vector. I hope this point is clear. Then we have some of the examples here. Some examples of scalar quantities, time, mass, volume, density, all these are examples. These are not the only ones. There are a lot of examples. For vector quantities, we have force, weight, we have acceleration, we have displacement, we have velocity. So many examples under vector quantities. I hope at this point, ladies and gentlemen, you have picked something, the difference between scalar and vector quantities. Let's now try to move and look at distance and displacement.